everybody, and welcome to our top 10 quick comic picks. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is our real quick show where we show you some of the biggest and best books that you can purchase this week. They're coming out this week, so you can head over to infinityflux.net and order them. They're already up there, or if you're local, you can stop by the store and grab them, but we mm -hmm. wanted to let you know a little bit more about what to expect when you're expecting great comics. Great comics. <laughs> That's a great other show title. Yeah, right. Uh, so let's get into this week's books. Yeah, starting we, with another big one. That's right. We've got our next From the Ashes Era X books. This is X Force number one. And in this one, Forge creates this device called the Analog. It's like a little orb, almost like a little magic eight ball that points out crisis points or what he calls fractures in the world that if they're not taken care of the world could end basically and so he puts together a team you can see them here on the cover to go take care of all these crisis points and in this first one they come together to take care of this big monster in japan but there's a little bit more to it than just your typical kaiju this is a nice one and done story by the time the issue's over their mission is done and they're ready to go off to the next one this one was really really fun yep next up one of our favorites, it's Ultimate Spider-Man number seven. So this actually begins a new story arc. Uh, roughly, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're still, it's still very early days of these characters. Uh, and in this one, Peter and Harry Osborn go to Otto Octavius to find out a little bit more about their own suits yeah. and what they're capable of and learning they haven't even unlocked the full potential of them. Also, meanwhile, uh, J. Jonah Jameson and Ben Parker meet with a mysterious person to get some inside scoop on what's going on at the Daily Bugle. All really, really fun stuff. A bunch of surprises yeah. at the end. Some cool stuff with Kingpin. So another great addition to the Ultimate Spider-Man run. <laughs> Well, next up is Blood Hunt number five. This is the end of Blood Hunt, the big finale right here. It's the final face-off between the Avengers and Blade and the Blood Coven. You've got Moon Knight and all the resurrected Moon Knights. You've got a couple other heroes coming in. Uh, just, you know, you ought to read it to see how this whole event ends. And it leads to something, or it sets up something, that was announced at Comic-Con. So I cannot wait to see what that story is going to be. Next up, this one's really fun. It's a What If... Donald became, or Donald Duck became Wolverine, and this is very timely, but this is really cool. It's a one-shot issue where we see Donald Wolverine, who has retired since uh, Pete Skull, yeah. uh, has taken over, and it's a little bit Old Man Logan when Mickey Hawkeye shows up and tries to recruit Donald out of his hammock and back to fighting the good fight. There's a lot of fun references to both universes and if you're just looking for a really fun comic this week you will be delighted by this one next up is black widow venomous this is a one shot that is leading into the venom war which i believe starts next week or the week after and this just kind of reinforces black widow's bond with her symbiote she gives it the same red room training or similar mm -hmm. red room training that she had she calls on some other heroes to help train the symbiote to strengthen their bond and i guess that's going to help them in the upcoming venom war next up a fun one shot kind of a summary book this is super pet special bite identity crisis so this is an anthology story about some of our favorite pets from the DC Universe. The main story in this is about Bitewing, who uh, gets dropped off when Barbara and Dick have to go to a wedding that's a no pets allowed. They drop Bitewing off at the Kent's farm where, you know, Haley can run around and have fun, only to discover that is the headquarters of the DC Super Pets and one of their own has gone missing, and it's a big team up to help them. Plus, there's other fun stories involving uh, multiple characters, including Bat, Cow, and all of that. And a really fun final story in here that uh, is an homage to one of the most famous mm -hmm. comics of all time. So don't miss it. Uh, if you are a pet lover, this one's really fun. Well, next we have Absolute Power Task Force 7, number three. Each one of these issues focuses on a different Amazo robot. This one focuses on the one named Jade Stone. It absorbs Alan Scott's uh, Green, Green Lantern power, but when it does, it absorbs also his willpower, which starts to cause some conflicts in its programming. Now, instead of just blindly following orders, 
it sees its orders as choices. They, yeah. you know, it can say yes or no to these orders, even though Amanda Waller doesn't want it to do that. But so this willpower that it absorbs starting to maybe kind of sort of give it a conscience a little bit. And how will that affect or maybe help or hinder the heroes going forward? And next up, we've got spider Win Ghost Spider, issue number three. This one is really, really fun, where uh, she is in the clutches of the chameleon, and the chameleon's doing what he does best, uh, portraying her and giving her a bad name, going out and doing a crime spree and turning the city against Gwen. But she's going to try to stop him. Uh, but there's something unexpected that happens with Gwen in this that kind of gets her out of one situation, but it may lead to worse things for her in the future. So big stuff happening here that we don't quite understand yet, but really, really fun issue. Plus, this does have one of the parts of the weapon extraction yeah. uh, storyline. I just don't remember which one. Well, last for me is Gromit's number three. I just love this book, a nice slice of life book about two friends skateboarding in 1980s California. In this one, we'll meet a new character, Liberty Spike Mike, who convinces Brian and Rick to skip school so they can go to the mall and get high. And they end up getting way too high, though. Uh, Rick asks one of the gens to a party, but completely blows it. And Brian misses his chance with a girl that he likes as well. So just more slice of life fun in Grommets. And last up for me, I've got Star Wars Darth Maul Black, White, and Red number four. This is the final issue of this series. And this one is written by Greg Pak. It's really cool because in this one, like all of them, uh, Darth Maul's out on a mission. And Sidious basically says, hey, uh, you're getting a little too wild. We need to rein it back in and you need to go off and meditate to this far off planet. Well, when he gets there, it's not a great place for meditation. It's pretty loud, but Darth Maul is going to make it a lot more quiet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, fun final issue of this mini-series, wrapping up another one of these black, white, and red. And that is it for our top 10 quick comic picks. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to head over to infinityflux.net right now where you can order these books. They are live on there while supplies last, so don't miss out on that. And we've got our longer show coming up where we'll be going over these books, their variants, plus a lot more coming up very, very soon. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see you. Goodbye.